Atlanta, Georgia, home to the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. The number five Louisville Cardinals in town. Got ACC basketball coming up on the ACC Network. Hi, everybody. Chris Cotter alongside Chris Batola. Louisville hopes to get back to the Final Four this year. They really think they've got a team to do it. First time since 2013, if they can get back. And they've got a Player of the Year candidate, yeah. Jordan War. He can carry him there. He's a matchup problem because there really aren't any holes in his game. I mean, he does a little bit of everything. He's leading the ACC in three-point field goal percentage. He's starting to put it on the floor into his shot. He does it all over the floor, all three levels. He's got good size, so he's a good finisher at the rim. Leads the league in scoring. I mean, he's just a matchup problem, Chris. And he dominates your scouting report because all the things he does make other guys better. And you talk about all the things he does, and you mentioned leading the league in scoring at 19 and a half per. He's also a very efficient shooter. He can shoot the ball from beyond the arc or take it to the rim. He's great from the free throw line, so you don't want to foul him. And he can also pull a board or two. He's just a complete player and clearly one of the favorites for Player of the Year honors, not just in the ACC, but nationally. The Cardinals come in number five in the country. When you talk about Joe Lenardi's big board right now, he's got him as a two seed. So they've got some work to do if they want to be a number one seed. And it starts tonight in Atlanta, and we're underway. Georgia Tech and Louisville. And it's a Georgia Tech team, Chris, that pushed Louisville at the Yum Center just about three weeks ago before ultimately losing by just four points. They did. Their two guards, Jose Alvarado and Michael DeVoe, were outstanding in that game. Gave Louisville a lot of problems. Now Banks stuck with it a little bit. DeVoe over to Alvarado for three. Nails it. That gets the crowd into it a little bit. Let's check out Louisville starting five. Jordan War, obviously, big spotlight on him. But this is a team that not only can get contributions throughout this starting five, but they go deep, too. They can bring four players off the bench. Here's Sutton. Draws some contact, doesn't get the call, but gets the layup. Wayne Sutton, a redshirt senior from Louisville. Began his career at UNC Asheville. Here's Tech starting five, Jose Alvarado. Congratulations to Jose. Brand new baby daughter, Nazanin. I'm sure she's watching at home. One week old, was born exactly a week ago today, so congratulations to Jose, the new father. That's Jordan Usher. Just couldn't get the role to go. Here come the Cardinals. Steven Enoch goes up and under. Banks with the rebound. Watch that matchup tonight. Yeah, it's a big time matchup. And, you know, Banks did a nice job not giving ground. Enoch tried to get early position. Banks made him catch it a little higher than I think Enoch wanted. Nice move by Moses right down on the block. Increase in Tech's lead now, back to three points, 5-2. Georgia Tech will change up their defenses, starting in a man here, and you know they also play a 1-3-1, a matchup zone. But in that earlier matchup this year, played about 80% man. So they've they've gone against Louisville. I think Josh Pastner seeing the man-to-man -man as a better matchup against all the weapons that Louisville has. Darius Perry, one of those, missing from three on that last possession. Michael DeVoe getting inside the paint, back to his right. Oh, shot couldn't go, but there's Moses right for the rebound and the putback deuce. That front line is a problem for Georgia Tech. Outstanding shot blockers, but when those two guys are active offensively, this Georgia Tech team goes to another level. Fresh Kimball off the front of the rim. Alvarado gets the rebound. Here's DeVoe averaging over 16 points a game. Seventh in the ACC. Nice backdoor cut and a layup for Usher. And Chris Mack went over that. In the shoot around this morning, that backdoor cut. You know, Louisville runs that pack line defense, and, and on that wing, he's just caught ball watching as DeVoe handled up top. Kimball gets it down low to Jordan Wara. Calls for the offensive foul. There's Chris Mack, second year head coach at Louisville, done a fantastic job. That you know, goes without saying the job he has done in his first couple of years with the Cardinals. We're going to sit the bench here early, picking up that quick foul. We'll get a little bit of a breather here early. 9-2, to two, Georgia Tech on top. 
Well, and I think Chris Mack much more comfortable at this point in the year going to his bench. You know, early on, they did not have David Johnson. He was hurt. Malik Williams, he was hurt as Alvarado knocks another one down. But as David Johnson got healthy, Sam Williamson playing better, they've gone deeper and more talented. How about this start? Crowd into it here at McCamish, 12-2. Georgia Tech with the early lead. Scott Passner pushing all the right buttons. Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets off to a great start here against the number five team in the country, Josh Pastner. Of course, season as Tech's head coach, first year at Georgia Tech. He was the ACC coach of the year. Since then, a little rough sledding for him as he's trying to get this team back to prominence in the league and back to the NCAA tournament and not just the NIT tournament. You know, their inconsistency has puzzled me this year because they are talented. I mean, their guards are good. Michael DeVoe's having a really good year. They're big, active up front. First look at Williamson. He crashes to get his own rebound. And Sam Williamson misses initially, but good hustle to get the board fresh. Kimball now drives, had it pickpocketed by Alvarado, but it'll stay with the Cardinals. Fresh Kimball, great name. Inbound in the ball, the transfer from St. Joe's, almost with the turnover. As Usher and Dwayne Sutton just collided near midcourt. Looks like both players are all right. Good look at Coach Mack, as my mother always said, you know, better door than a window. <laughs> right in front of us here at the broadcast booth. Sure, we'll get an earful from Coach Mack throughout the game. Great defense down on the baseline, shutting off Enoch. Five to shoot for the Cardinals. Alvarado making it difficult. Kimball's going to have to put it up, but he does off the rim. Moses right with the rebound. DeVoe trying to get into the paint. Does. Up over the top, but Enoch made him change his shot. Cardinals now on the break. Great job defensively by Jordan Usher. Unusually warm night here in Atlanta. Not so for the Louisville Cardinals. Cold shooting out the gate, just one for six on the floor. And importantly, Chris, zero turnovers for Georgia Tech. Josh Pasch Josh Pastor made a point of telling us that this morning during shoot around, got to take care of the basketball. Yeah, uh, it's been an issue for them. And, you know, look, Louisville's not a team that's going to try to turn you over. Again, they're, they're in that pack line. But when you get two open threes for that guy right there, Jose Alvarado, you know, that's half of Tech's points to start this game. An opportunity to see Harold the freshman David Johnson, the Louisville Cardinals. Number 13 in that backcourt. Here he is, checked by Alvarado, coming off the screen. Loose ball. Usher is hustling all over the court here early. It'll stay with Louisville, but made a great play on that fast break opportunity for the Cardinals before the break, and they're getting on the court. Broom challenge. You've seen the broom challenge on social media? I have. I didn't understand exactly I what it either. was. I don't either. These things just go viral. It, it's, it's beyond me. I'm told, I'm it, told it uh, has something to do with the rotation of the earth, but I'm calling BS on that. Yeah. That individual with the broom didn't care about that broom challenge. He's got work to do. Got a job. And he did it fantastically. Now trying to get it inside of Enoch. Banks falls down, so Enoch has a lane, but it's shut down by Moses Wright. We do finally get a whistle. 
Banks got called for it. Check out what Banks ultimately got called for the foul, but Moses Wright doing a fantastic job coming over after Banks had fallen down. First call on Banks. Johnson, strong again to the 10. And another call against the Jackets, and they'll go against Banks again. That's two quick ones. And that's been the one issue with him is foul trouble. And when you're a shot blocker, you're living on the edge constantly. And that's big, you know, because against a team like Louisville, who's got really good size, and they will throw it, especially to Stephen Enoch, but they've also got guys who are going to put it on the floor. As you saw Johnson right there, that rim protection so big, and you lose the ACC's second leading shot blocker to two fouls early in this first half. The lead more, the 6'7 sophomore from Archbishop Malloy, high school in New York City. Tech fans fairly familiar with Archbishop Malloy when Kenny Anderson went there. One of two from the line. Georgia Tech still leads by nine. Alvarado just over the top. Couldn't connect with Moses Wright. First turnover of the game for the Jackets. Well, and you'd love to see him take a couple more dribbles to the wing. you got a better angle, an easier pass. Those are the kind of turnovers that Georgia Tech's had. You're, you're okay with ones where you're making a play, but just to kind of, on a post pass, to air mail it, it's a bad turnover. Laura with one here, stolen by DeVoe. He'll look to push the pace. Gets in the paint before he's fouled by McMahon. You know, it's interesting. Louisville has three losses on the year. One to Kentucky, one to Texas Tech, and then one to Florida State. Now, the Kentucky and Texas Tech losses, Chris Mack saying this morning, he thought they beat themselves. This game has a feel to that. Like, I don't think Louisville's engaged in this game yet. They're sloppy, lazy on some plays, not making shots, not being aggressive. You know, he said the Florida State loss, they just beat us. They were better than us that day. Nice drive there. Johnson shows his talent, huh? I'll tell you what, his talent is high. I mean, it, it's, it's incredible the impact he has had on this team. He's won the Duke game for them there in Cameron. Alvarado getting into the paint and getting to look a really good look, and that was something that hurt this Louisville team in their first being Georgia Tech guards getting easy shots at the rim. McMahon from deep off the mark. Big pull by Williams, and we'll get a call against the Jackets. You know, two different sized guards. You got one right here, a physical David Johnson at 6'5", and then Jose Alvarado just off the bounce. They list him at six feet, like the broom challenge. I'm calling BS <laughs> on that. They also list McMahon at six feet, so I want to see him go back to back. He certainly had the right guy checking him on that drive. Here's War. He has Alvarado on him. That's off tough, the mark. That's a tough shot. You know, the shot quality has not been good to start this game for Louisville. Alvarado from the corner. Off the mark on that one, too. Williamson couldn't pull the board. It'll go back to Georgia Tech. Saturday afternoon on the ACC Network, this fifth-ranked Louisville Cardinal team goes on the road to Little John to take on Clemson. 4 Eastern right here on the ACC Network, as well as on the ESPN app. Bubba Parham now over to Usher. Gets in the lane, tough shot, nails it. He is a good athlete, learning how to play the game. Josh Pastor saying today, he's got to become a basketball player, but he's got good size, a good athlete. What a tough finish that was. Lead back up to 11 for Georgia Tech. McMahon with the shot fake, trying to find some space, but Bubba Parham not giving him much. Now we'll get a call here against Alvarado down low. Two old buddies, Jose Alvarado and Jordan Wara, were on the same AAU team. There's actually three guys in this game who are all on the same AAU team. Alvarado, Wara, and Khalid Moore. They played 
all in New York. They played for an AAU team called the Wrens for a guy named Andy Borman. Wara and Alvarado, good buddies. There they are again, matched up. And Wara just off the back iron. Now we'll get a call against this Cardinal team, Malik Williams. Just a little too aggressive trying to pull the offensive rebound. Three-team fouls against the Cardinals. Fresh Kimball back in the game. Ryan McMahon will have a seat. Louisville just 2 of 11 shooting the ball here in the early going. It's helped Georgia Tech to carve out this advantage. Alvarado on Kimball gets down low again. Couldn't get the bucket to go amongst the trees, but gets his own board. Usher. Three goes Watson. Williamson with the board. Mm. Johnson broke down the defender, but just lost it out of bounds. The Institute off to a hot start here on their home court. 16-5. They lead by 11. Georgia Tech shooting 50% from the field to start this game, getting whatever they want. And really, it's a lot of penetration. Just off the bounce, creates this open three here. This Louisville defense, almost like they're moving in quicksand. Jordan wore a step late, ball watching. You get the backdoor cut. And then again, the penetration from Alvarado at the rim. So credit Georgia Tech being aggressive, Chris. But this Louisville team not really activated offensively yet. Kind of slow play in this game. Just a couple of field goals for the cards to this point. Alvarado on the bench describing how he was able to rack up eight points, a couple of threes. Evan Cole in the game for the Jackets on that front line. Lead Moore as well in the game. Bubba Parham, Coach Pastner going to his bench. Here's Cole. Trying to get it to the bow. They have a hard time. And now Wara with the steal. Usher trying to give chase, but he can't catch him. Wara with the easy deuce. And when you're a scorer, it helps to get an easy one like that. You know, to pop the court, get you going. Georgia Tech's got to be able to complete that play. And the dribble handoff. Evan Cole just fumbles it away. And then Wara won the hustle battle with the loose ball. DeVoe trying to drive. He loses it. So two, two turnovers in a row. Williams gets the call as he takes it to the rack. It's nice when you're the leading scorer in the ACC, off to a slow start to get one like this, and you said it, Chris, he was first to the ball. You know, the tougher team makes the rules, and when you're first to the ball, an element of toughness, you know, it's a guy who is hungry to score and has figured out different ways. It's not just jacking threes, it's not just taking bad shots, he's figured out different ways this year to put the ball in the basket. Malik Williams, a 6'11 junior from Fort Wayne, 65% from the line, misses the first. Alvarado and Banks now back in the game for Josh Pastner. Banks with the two fouls. Josh Pastner going to ride with him. I think he senses this is a little bit of a moment here where a couple of those turnovers now, a little momentum for Louisville. And maybe you play him a minute. You know, you got a, an offensive possession here. You trust that he's, you know, not going to foul, then you get him out, minute, two minutes. Kimball on Alvarado. Good matchup there. Alvarado gets to Banks. This is the dunk, but he'll go to the line. You know, that again, it's the penetration. And he was patient because he felt the help come, and then once the help relaxed, like there's this little hesitation. Watch, right there, gets the defense a little confused. They stand up, and then the drop off to Banks, and the sub pays off by Josh Pastner to put a guy with two fouls in on an offensive possession. He gets to the line, he gets two free throws. Banks off the mark on the first. He's a 64% free throw shooter. That call goes against Sam Williamson for Louisville. That's his first.
James Banks misses them both. Johnson, the freshman. Step back at the elbow. Wow. Okay. Uh, he's, I mean, he, he is, you know, it's interesting. He was hurt early in the year, and I did one of their games, and Chris Mack was raving about him. I hadn't seen him yet. Chris Mack was raving about him. David Johnson has lived up to everything his head coach was talking about. He plays at such a good pace for a freshman. He's never really sped up. Alvarado draws the call. First against Stephen Enoch. You know, guards have become, especially veteran guards, have become so good on that hard hedge, inducing that foul. This is right. This is the dunk, and he'll get the call. Chris Mack unhappy with it. Oh he, no, he's not. He's he's. I don't know if he's fine or not with that call. He traveled up top, and the officials missed it. The end result is two fouls now on Enoch. He may be coming out. As Chris Mack is going to go to his bench. Right good on the first free throw. Here's his play. I mean, that's a walk. And if you're allowed to walk, then you can do things like that. And hit both free throws. Tech back to an eight-point lead. Sam Williamson, nice strong drive. He'll go to the line. These two freshmen, right? David Johnson, Sam Williamson have been aggressive. Setting the tone right now for Louisville on the offensive end. Both these two freshmen coming off the bench. Giving the Cardinals a spark. Williamson gets the bounce. Next women's basketball doubleheader on the ACC Network. Tomorrow night starts at 6 Eastern with the Blue Devils. And Pittsburgh taking on the Panthers, followed by a really nice top 10 matchup. Number 9 Louisville and Raleigh taking on number 4 NC State. Both games right here on the ACC Network as well as on the ESPN app. Williamson connects on both free throws. Lead back down to 6. Williamson will... Get a breather. Dwayne Sutton back in for the Cardinals. Yeah, that's that's the one difference in this game. Louisville much deeper. Chris Mack much more access to his bench. The one problem for Georgia Tech, they get really nothing from their bench. Right now, Bubba Parham off the bench. In that backcourt for the Jackets. He has the ball now on the wing. He tries to drive, gets shut off. Banks is going to look to go to work. He does, and gets the nice running hook. It's old school. That's from back in your day, Connor. <laughs> Little sky hook. Not that old. Banks just battling down low here. Ooh. Malik Williams, though. But that little shimmy into the jump hook, a different version. It's a hook buffet right now here in Atlanta. <laughs> Any more out of you, and I'm going to give you the hook. A smorgasbord, <laughs> if you win. Alvarado again losing his footing a little bit on the court. Trying to get in the paint, loses it. Here comes Wara. Alvarado back to try and defend, and Wara loses it. Parham with the save. <laughs> what a play by Alvarado. Sneaky. Check for your wallet, Jordan Wara. How about the hands? The end result is a foul on Dwayne Sutton for Louisville. So great hustle by, we've seen this a couple of times now down the court, Georgia Tech. They get a turnover on the offensive end, but they hustle back to make a nice play defensively. Bubba Parham fouled, making that save when the ball was going out of bounds. They'll shoot one and one. And this is the front end. Georgia Tech leaving some points out there on the free throw line. Fresh Kimball. On Parham. All over, and Parham's going to get the call against him. 
Here's that pilfer by Jose Alvarado, and he's in retreat. This is a tough play. He kind of knew the Euro was coming, and, and Bora fumbling it a little bit, but a nice knock away, and ended up getting free throws off at that. Like you said, Georgia Tech missing free throws is killing them right now, even though they're up six. It's two of five from the line and missing front ends, too. Fresh Kimball, true on that free throw attempt. I was wondering how long it was going to take you to show an appreciation for the nickname Fresh. You did it like 30 seconds 30 into the seconds game. in, you knew it. Predictable. It just jumps right out at me, and I admire it. I'm sure you're the first person this year who's commented on it <laughs> on air. I'm sure I wasn't even the fastest one 30 seconds in to comment on it. Well, Fresh Kimball's got his work cut out for him against Alvarado tonight. We've seen it. Alvarado's done a really nice job getting inside. Now, the pressure coming far away from the basket, but Alvarado gets it in the banks. Now with the left hand. Wow. How about that? And how about the decision by Josh Passner to play him with two fouls? He got four points off of it. And we get an offensive call here against Jordan Wara on the pick. Now that's going to be two against Wara. So Coach Mack not taking any chances with his star player, going to give him a little bit of a breather. Jackets continue to lead by six. Usher gets it into Banks. Battle for the rebound goes to the Cardinals. Kimball strong to his left. Banks to the floor. Gets it to Usher. He finishes. Crowd back on their feet here at McGamish. The lead is eight. Perry spins back to his right. That is a tough shot, and they're going to get Alvarado. When, when Alvarado you second. When you turn it over, you're giving Georgia Tech runouts. And how about the punch home there by Jordan Usher? Cotter and Spatola back with you inside McCamish. 24-16, Jackets with the lead, 7-10 left to go in this first half. Jose Alvarado got off to a hot start, as did the Jackets as a whole. 10 uh, point lead early, and Jordan Wara only has two points and two fouls. And this was the second foul. He's setting a screen here, and watch his base. When your legs are outside your shoulders, that's a new rule. They changed that a couple years ago. It's an illegal block, good call by Jamie Lucky. Two fouls on the ACC's right now player of the year. And that means Jordan Moore is going to take a little bit of a breather here in this first half. Averaging 19 and a half a game, just two here early on in the first half. Darius Perry on the line for Louisville, misses the first. This has been the consistent offense for Louisville in this half so far. They haven't shot it well from the field, but they have consistently gotten themselves to the line. Perry gets the bounce on the second. Perry checking Alvarado. Here's Usher back up top. Parham. Shut off. Now Usher with 10 to shoot off the back iron. Williamson a little out of control and they'll call him for traveling. You know, I know everybody loves the Euro step, but sometimes we, we jump the shark on the Euro step. Like just take that with your left hand, drive it hard to the basket. If the defense cuts you off, then make your move, but to go into your Euro, everybody knows it's coming now. Alvarado for three. Good. His third three of the first half. It's a guy who really struggled last year shooting the three ball. Worked so hard in the offseason, vowed to come back 
at a higher percentage, and he is shooting it lights out over the last five games. So active defensively. Now the steal. Here come the Jackets the other way. Parham, two on five, slows it up. Alvarado with a little space, but he'll be called. He created the space himself. That's three on Alvarado. That's a big foul called against the Jackets. Jose Alvarado off the bounce, and it's just too much space. And he's got a little guitar playing there. I don't know if it's acoustic or electric, but he is electric right now. He's going to have to turn it down to acoustic because he's going to the bench. Wow, look at that. Look at that symmetry we just had there with our, our <laughs> music not, puns. I'm not sure how much it makes sense. But Alvarado isn't going to be rocking and rolling for at least a few minutes here. Maybe the rest of the first half as Pastor doesn't want him to pick up number four. He's got this 10-point advantage, though. Well, you would have thought also Louisville would make James Banks play in there. And they did go after him there, but you think at some point you'd throw it into the block and force Banks to have to guard. And Banks has two fouls as well, and Williams that time was able to get good position down low and get the easy bucket. DeVoe now with ball handling responsibilities with Alvarado out. Banks finishes. And it's with a soft touch. Six points for Banks here in the first half. McMahon drives. Gets it to Williams, but Cole is there to knock it away. Get pass now in the corner. Outstanding passing. Sutton way off the mark, though, on the three. James Banks, three hook shots in this first half, all buried. And look at the position. Catches it two feet in the paint. Gets to his hook. A soft touch laying it on the front of the rim, letting it just dribble in. What a half. He's got the headband on. He was wearing the goggles. I know. During the shoot around, I thought maybe he was channeling the. I was so envious of him. Maybe he's not. Maybe he doesn't have the goggles because I borrowed them. Because I'm going to wear those goggles at some point in time before this season is over. Eric Dickerson special. It could only help. <laughs> Parham finds Banks again. Banks just a little short that time, and now we'll get a call here against Moses Wright crashing the boards. Crashed right into Malik Williams. And that's his second. So you got the two bigs for Georgia Tech, each with two. Georgia Tech just about across the board for their starters with two fouls. With the exception of Alvarado, who has three, and he's taking a little bit of a, a breather right now. Jordan Wara, by the way, back in the game for Chris Mack. He's got a couple of fouls, so keep an eye on that. Both teams in the bonus, so Malik Williams will shoot. Now a couple of free throws. Cardinal substitution number zero, Fresh Campbell. Fresh back in for Darius Perry. We'll give Georgia Tech's defense a lot of credit. They have not allowed Louisville to run their stuff, get comfortable. This free throw line has been really what has even kept this thing at an eight-point game for Louisville. Cardinals now nine of 12 from the charity stripe. Again, Alvarado's got three fouls for the Jackets, so DeVoe now assuming point guard duties. Khalid Moore back in the game for the Jackets. Right, six to shoot. The one on Wara. That is a tough shot, can't get it to bounce in. It's gonna go out of bounds. They're gonna keep it with the Jackets. You know, that's a touchy play too, because they're going after Georgia Tech, going right to right, who's being guarded by Wara with the two fouls. Fresh 20 seconds to shoot for Georgia Tech. Parham now a little ticky-tack on McMahon. Jackets keeping their lead up eight against the number five team in the country. Capitol building here in downtown Atlanta, just 
uh, maybe a mile or so away from our spot here in McGamish on the campus of the Georgia Institute of Technology. Coming up on the State Farm Halftime Report, Kelsey Riggs, Jordan Cornett, and Malcolm Huckabee. They got Huck off the road in studio. Talk about first half highlights from our game. Boston College and Miami highlights, plus a discussion on ACC bubble teams. Virginia on that bubble. You can go down to Syracuse on that bubble. That might be about it. Chris Mack and Louisville not on that bubble, but they're trying to get a number one seed in this upcoming NCAA tournament. They've got very little room for error. Right now, Villanardi has him as a two seed. Along with Duke, also a two seed. In Lenardi's bracketology. Bubba Parm makes both free throws for the Jackets. Lead back up to 10. David Johnson. Strong move. Able to prevent traveling, but the air ball. Williams gets it picked. Here comes Parm quickly. Looking to break down Wara. Nowhere to go now. He's going to bring it back out. DeVoe now with 15 to shoot. He drives McMahon, gets a whole lot of basketball. Now they're going to call a held ball. And looks like Fresh Kimmel may have taken an elbow. That was a great dig by Ryan McMahon. Alternate possession is gonna to go to Louisville. Look at that help. You know, you don't always wanna help off that strong side corner, but there is where Kimball gets jacked in the face. DeVoe, a little bit of a sharp elbow there. He's able to find fresh Kimball. And Kimball's gonna have a seat. Looks like he's all right, but just trying to shake that off. Caught it enough in his eye to where he's going to have to take a few minutes. Lead is 10. It's been hovering around 8, 10 points now for, for a while. Louisville just hasn't been able to get anything going offensively. Johnson trying again. Nothing doing on his drive, but there's number five again, Malik Williams. He's been strong on the offensive glass. Yes. Georgia, Georgia Techs, they've done a nice job helping on penetration. They've had quick hands. They've had a lot of swipes. Devo cut off. Swarm with 10 to shoot. Working on McMahon. Back outside. Moore for three. Off the back iron. Moses right battling for the rebound. It goes out of bounds to Louisville. He plays so hard. He really only knows one speed. He's always on the offensive glass. Always on the offensive glass. Moses Wright. You sense Georgia Tech in the half-court offense a little bit stagnant now it's, that Alvarado's gone now? It's down. become a little bit individual. You know, a, a, a lot of a guy making a play and not Georgia Tech creating an open shot, which we saw early in the game. And a lot of that has to do with Alvarado not being out there. Three fouls for Alvarado. Big rebound for Parham. Smallest guy in the court, skies to pull it. Now he's going to drive on McMahon. Blocked. Williams. McMahon for three. He's off the mark. Evan Cole pulls the board in the game now for the Jackets. Here comes DeVoe. He can't finish at the rim. Up and down the court without any scoring. Now Johnson's going to try and change that. Out to Williamson, wide open for three. He knocks it down. Freshman to freshman, David Johnson's vision is his best asset. What a find. First three of the game for Louisville. We get a call here against Banks on the pick. That's a big call against Tech, too, because that's his third foul in this first half. It is a big call. Here's that three on the other end. Johnson senses the help by DeVoe, who overhelps. 
and find Sam Williamson out on the perimeter. And then here's this third foul. I've seen a lot of these, you know, moving screens, and I don't know why that's a foul. I thought he was sent. Banks is going to sit now for the rest of the first half. Both he and Alvarado have three fouls. Williamson tries to find some space. Can't. Eight to shoot for Johnson. Underneath, tried to get it to Williamson, cutting back door, and it's a turnover against the Cards. Coach Baster is going to call a quick timeout here. Final 48 seconds of the first half to draw something up. This club up by five. Friday night on the ACC Network, catch a top 10 wrestling matchup between number seven, Virginia Tech, and number three, NC State. Sean Kenny, Rock Harrison, of course, Rock Harrison is going to be doing wrestling for us. And Jen Reeves will have the call from Reynolds Coliseum. Coverage begins at 7 o'clock right here on the ACC Network, as well as on that ESPN app. Wolfpack 13-0 on this season. The only other unbeaten team is Iowa. Williamson's three that we just saw, their first three-pointer of the entire game, their only three-pointer in this game, and a team that shoots the ball very well from beyond the arc, just haven't had any success here tonight. Well, they, they've been in a malaise. There's a malaise in this first half for Louisville, and they're, to be only down five, to me, they're fortunate. They've been sloppy on the offensive end. Their defense hasn't been nearly as tough and as stout as it, as it has been all year. Let's see what Josh Pastner drew up during the timeout. Well, now they're in a zone. So whatever they drew up, now they're going to have to execute against zone. Usher gets it back. Low to Cole. He goes up, blocks. I love it. You know, you, you, you knew, Chris Mack knew Josh Pastner was going to draw something up against man. He comes out in a 2-3 zone, and Tech can't adjust. Now shot clock off for the Cardinals. Coach Mack working for one shot. Here's Johnson, driving, can't get the roll to go. Will Tech get a shot? Parm's gonna take it over the backboard. They're gonna call him for travel first before he took the shot. So the officials will make sure they have the exact time on the clock. And now the Cardinals will get a shot here from midcourt. Chris Mack gets Jordan Moore back in the game. Still point four on the clock, and that's what the Cardinals are going to have to deal with here. McMahon makes the <laughs> shot, and they'll wave it off. It doesn't go. They'll take a look at it on the monitor, but originally waving it off on the court. I mean, I didn't think he got it off, but that was as that was closer than I thought it was. As close as you can get it. Take another look at it. Look at the backboard with the red light. Still at his yeah, hand. No, that didn't no get it off. Good call by our officials, Jamie Lucky, Jeffrey Anderson, Lamar Simpson, our officiating crew tonight. That is close, but it looks like the ball is still in his hands when the clock hits zeros and the red light around the backboard goes off. No bucket. So the Jackets, who led by as many as 11 points in the first half, Josh Pastor and his crew take a five-point lead into the break. When we return, Kelsey Riggs, Jordan Cornett, and Malcolm Huckabee with the State Farm Halftime Report. Back at McCamish Pavilion here in Atlanta, second half about to get underway. Chris Cotter, Chris Patola, five-point lead for Georgia Tech over the number five team in the country, and Jose Alvarado got him started early. He did get him started early, and, and his three fouls and him going to the bench really affected their offense in the latter part of that half. His penetration, three. his shot making Good. from the perimeter got them off to a great start. This is Jordan Warrior's only bucket of the half. Only bucket, and he's got two fouls, had to go to the bench on this pick where he's got his base too wide there. 
And then James Banks, again, in foul trouble, has three fouls. Got a little scoring for them inside, but foul trouble for both teams, Chris. And I think both teams searching for some consistent offense, especially at the end of that half. You mentioned Jordan Wara, just two points, averaging 19 and a half, the ACC's leading scorer. And they were only able to make just one three-pointer as a team, Louisville was, in that first half. Georgia Tech, meanwhile, Alvarado with 11 points, but he's got the three fouls. And the Jackets only scored four points in the final six minutes of that first half, really allowing Louisville to creep back in with they were down 10. Now the deficit is five as we start the second half. Alvarado back in to start this second half with those three fouls, as is James Banks. Cardinals with a 10-game win streak coming in. DeVoe for three. Rattles it around and out. But he gets somehow into Banks' hands on the ground. Now he gets it in the air and puts in the bucket. Those extra effort plays around the basket have benefited Georgia Tech all night. Down low, tipped, fresh Kimball, way off the mark, right initially with the board, but then Sutton out battled him for it and gets the deuce. Cardinal roll for shooting 9 of 25 in that first half. Alvarado inside the banks. Shut off on the baseline by Sutton. Now to Usher. He'll drive with the left. <laughs> Scoop shot. Like a horse shot. <laughs> That's his game too, isn't it? The swinger through the lane. 100 miles an hour. Wara on Usher here. Didn't get any penetration. Sutton with the shot fake. Now he'll drive back out to Wara. Shot fake. He'll try for three. Short, way short. Battle for the rebound. We'll get a call. Ooh, gonna go against the Cardinals, against Wayne Sutton on that rebound. These are these extra effort plays. How about James Banks from his back that gets up and Usher rewards him with the bucket. You know, both these teams have had tried to manufacture points. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. There's that swinger from Usher. Banks a little credit. When you're 6'10", it ain't that easy to get up off the deck quickly, and he did. Now a quick foul here goes against Fresh Kimball. Second team foul of the second half. Side out for the Jackets. Usher now directing traffic on Wara. He'll go baseline, gets by Wara and misses the dunk. And now he picks up a silly uh, foul. Very silly. You know, a bit of a bruised ego on the missed dunk, so you're trying to make a play after that. He gets right by Wara, who doesn't want to commit a foul, his third. And just a silly foul. You know, this Louisville offense hasn't moved well. The ball hasn't really moved. Guys are kind of standing, you know, just a general laziness a little bit on the offensive end. Getting into stuff slowly. Now there's a nice move by Steven Enoch. Sort of giving Banks a little bit of his own medicine in the paint. He loves to post right at, at the top of that restricted arc, right in the paint. He's become very efficient with that hook. Alvarado splits the double team, tried to get it down low to a driving usher and a call against Louisville. And they look for him when Stephen Enoch gets his post position right here right at that ACC logo. He's become very efficient with that shot. You know, when he's right, when he's playing with a consistent motor, stays out of foul trouble, he's as big a matchup problem as there is in this league. Stephen Enoch. Call against Darius Perry for Louisville. Alvarado trying to drive on fresh. Picks up where he left off when he had to take a seat on the pine with three fouls in that first half. That's 13.
<laughs> Alvarado really hurt Louisville in the last game between these two teams, and he is feeling it tonight. I mean, against Fresh Kimball, he feels like he can get whatever he wants and wherever he wants. Nice pass. Sam Williamson finding Enoch. I don't know how that thing got through. What a pass. We've seen the two freshmen off the bench, Sam Williamson and David Johnson, really giving Chris Mack good minutes tonight for Louisville. Here's Alvarado for three. Way off the mark. Perry will look to push. Now he backs out and just loses it out of bounds. Yeah, this play down, I mean, just a really, really not a great angle to make that pass. Somehow he gets it through and a, a, really a good catch by Stephen Enoch. But then, you know, it's been that kind of night. You get a good play and then something just dribbles it off himself out of bounds. just trying to find some space. Now he gets it down low to right. Tough pass to hand, a little stay with the Yellow Jackets as Sutton was defending on the play. Usher to inbound for the Jackets, gets it to right. Right gets it right back. Right with the turnover. Do you think James Banks is eating over there? Yeah, it looks like maybe some uh, cashews or something. A little bit of protein, maybe. Just get fueled up for this final push here in Atlanta. Johnson with Alvarado on him back into the corner. Fresh Kimball. He gets into the paint. Just bounces out. Battle for the rebound. Look at Williams there. Hard getting it. Now against Wright. Wright with the block. Here come the Jackets. Usher spinning in the lane. And he walks. It is a physical game underneath. You better be ready down there, man. <laughs> Big fella's grinding. Capitol building here in downtown Atlanta, just uh, maybe a mile or so away from our spot here in McGamish on the campus of the Georgia Institute of Technology. Coming up on the State Farm Halftime Report, Kelsey Riggs, Jordan Cornett, and Malcolm Huckabee. They got Huck off the road in studio. Let's talk about first half highlights from our game. Boston College and Miami highlights, plus a discussion on ACC bubble teams. Virginia on that bubble. You can go down to Syracuse on that bubble. That might be about it. Chris Mack and Louisville not on that bubble, but they're trying to get a number one seed in this upcoming NCAA tournament. They've got very little room for error. Right now, Villanardi has him as a two seed along with Duke, also a two seed in Lenardi's bracketology. Bubba Parm makes both free throws for the Jackets, lead back up to 10. David Johnson, strong move. Able to prevent traveling, but an air ball. Williams gets it picked. Here comes Parm quickly. Looking to break down Wara. Nowhere to go now. He's going to bring it back out. DeVoe now with 15 to shoot. He drives McMahon, gets a whole lot of basketball. Now they're going to call a held ball. And looks like Fresh Kimmel may have taken an elbow. That was a great dig by Ryan McMahon. Alternate possession is going to go to Louisville. Look at that help. 
you know, you don't always want to help off that strong side corner, but there is where Kimball gets jacked in the face. DeVoe, a little bit of a sharp elbow there. Some of the fine, fresh Kimball. And Kimball's going to have a seat. Looks like he's all right, but just trying to shake that off. Caught it enough in his eye to where he's going to have to take a few minutes. Lead is 10. It's been hovering around 8, 10 points now for, for a while. Louisville just hasn't been able to get anything going offensively. Johnson trying again. Nothing doing on his drive, but there's number five again, Malik Williams. He's been strong on the offensive glass. Yes. Georgia, Georgia Tech, they've done a nice job helping on penetration. They've had quick hands. They've had a lot of swipes. DeVoe cut off. One with 10 to shoot. Working on McMahon. Back outside. Moore for three. Off the back iron. Moses right battling for the rebound. It goes out of bounds to Louisville. He plays so hard. He really only knows one speed. He's always on the offensive glass. Always on the offensive glass. Moses Wright. You sense Georgia Tech in the half court offense a little bit stagnant now it's, that Alvarado's gone now? It's become a little bit individual. You know, a, a, a lot of a guy making a play and not Georgia Tech creating an open shot, which we saw early in the game. And a lot of that has to do with Alvarado not being out there. Three fouls for Alvarado. Big rebound for Parham. Smallest guy in the court, skies to pull it. Now he's going to drive on McMahon. Blocked. Williams. McMahon for three. He's off the mark. Evan Cole pulls the board in the game now for the Jackets. Here comes DeVoe. Finish at the rim. Up and down the court without any scoring. Now Johnson's going to try and change that. Out to Williamson, wide open for three. He knocks it down. Freshman to freshman, David Johnson's vision is his best asset. What a find. First three of the game for Louisville. Call here against Banks on the pick. That's a big call against Tech too because that's his third foul in this first half. It is a big call. Here's that three on the other end. Johnson senses the help by DeVoe who overhelps and finds Sam Williamson out on the perimeter. And then here's this third foul. I've seen a lot of these, you know, moving screens, and I don't know why that's a foul. I thought he was set. Banks is going to sit now for the rest of the first half. Both he and Alvarado have three fouls. Williamson tries to find some space. Can't. Eight to shoot for Johnson. Underneath. Tried to get it to Williamson cutting back door. And it's a turnover against the Cards. Coach Baster is going to call a quick timeout here. Final 48 seconds of the first half to draw something up. This club up by five. Friday night on the ACC Network, catch a top 10 wrestling matchup between number seven, Virginia Tech, and number three, NC State. Sean Kenny, Rock Harrison, of course, Rock Harrison is going to be doing wrestling for us. And Jen Reeves will have the call from Reynolds Coliseum. Coverage begins at 7 o'clock right here on the ACC Network, as well as on that ESPN app. Wolfpack 13-0 on this season. The only other unbeaten team is Iowa. Williamson's three that we just saw, their first three-pointer of the entire game, their only three-pointer in this game, and a team that shoots the ball very well from beyond the arc, just haven't had any success here tonight. Well, they, they've been in a malaise. There's a malaise in this first half for Louisville, and they're, to be only down five, to me, they're fortunate. They've been sloppy on the offensive end. Their defense hasn't been nearly as tough and as stout as it, as it has been all year. Let's see what Josh Pastner drew up during the timeout. Well, now they're in the zone. So whatever they drew up, now they're going to have to execute against zone. Usher gets it back. 
Low to Cole. He goes up, blocked. I love it. You know, you, you, you knew, Chris Mack knew Josh Pastner was going to draw something up against man. He comes out in a 2-3 zone, and Tech can't adjust. Now shot clock off for the Cardinals. Coach Mack working for one shot. Here's Johnson, driving, can't get the roll to go. Will Tech get a shot? Parm's gonna take it. Over the backboard, they're gonna call him for travel first before he took the shot. So the officials will make sure they have the exact time on the clock. And now the Cardinals will get a shot here from midcourt. Chris Mack gets Jordan Moore back in the game. Still .4 on the clock, and that's what the Cardinals are going to have to deal with here. McMahon makes the <laughs> shot, and they'll wave it off. It doesn't go. They'll take a look at it on the monitor, but originally waving it off on the court. I mean, I didn't think he got it off. But that was as that was closer than I thought it was. As close as you can get it. Take another look at it. Look at the backboard with the red light. Still at his yeah, hand. No, that didn't no get it off. Good call by our officials. Jamie Lucky, Jeffrey Anderson, Lamar Simpson, our officiating crew tonight. That is close, but it looks like the ball is still in his hands when the clock hits zeros and the red light around the backboard goes off. No bucket. So the Jackets, who led by as many as 11 points in the first half, Josh Pastor and his crew take a five-point lead into the break. When we return, Kelsey Riggs, Jordan Cornett, and Malcolm Huckabee with the State Farm Halftime Report. 39-34, Georgia Tech. And this is what we mean by gap to up. And for those of you who don't know how to spell that, it's in your upper left. Or upper right. I don't even know my left from right. <laughs> so he's helping off the corner there, Darius Perry. They're giving up that corner three. They're helping off that corner. Guards are jumping to the ball on the penetration and trying to swipe at it. Michael DeVoe's got to recognize that. As soon as you see that help coming over, that ball has to be pitched out to Bubba Parham and allow him to try and make a shot. Michael DeVoe at the line. Jack, it's just three of 10 from beyond the arc tonight. Louisville just one of 11. Here's DeVoe shooting one and one. Jackets already in the bonus. Over 12 minutes to go here in this game. First point of the night for DeVoe, who averages over 16 a game. In and out. Lead is six. Love to see Stephen Enoch get a touch here. No Jordan Wara in the game. Throw the big fella the ball. Working on Banks. That's been just a great matchup all night long. Instead, it's Johnson for three off the back of the rim. It'll stay out of bounds, stay with Louisville. Georgia Tech continues to lead the number five team in the country. The lead is six at the under 12 mark. Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets continue to lead fifth ranked Louisville 40 to 34. There's a good look at Jose Alvarado, the junior from Brooklyn, New York. New father, congratulations to Jose and his baby girl, Naz. Nazanin, her full name. Just a week ago tonight, she was brought into this world. All due respect to the curriculum here at Georgia Tech. That's the best class. Fatherhood is the best class he is now attending. He has got a full plate with, uh, to your point, the academic curriculum here being the point guard on this basketball team now a new, a new uh, and now a new father and he's gone off to a good start. He got off to a great start tonight, but picked up you know three quick fouls, which put him on the bench in the latter half part of the first half. And Josh Pastner has been uh, a very conservative with his minutes here in the second half, but he remains with three fouls back out there on the court. Checking David Johnson. 
the switch to Vaughn on Johnson. He works down low and man, he's special. He's made some great tough shots tonight. He is special. He, you know, he's got a little Magic Johnson to his game. He's not a great, he's not a speed demon, but he's very crafty with the ball. His vision is outstanding. We've seen him back defenders down low tonight. 6-5. Usher with a great move for himself. And it just rolls off the front end of the rim. This kid's going to be a special player. He, he does a lot of different things. And you can't speed him up. You know, that's the thing with freshmen. It, they, you can speed him up. They, they play so fast. He's always under control. Usher already in double figures on the night. A couple of really, really big juice plays for the Jackets, but Georgia Tech continues to struggle from the line. Well, they have all year. He has a team 65% from the foul line on the season, so it's, it's been an area all year they've struggled. Not even that high tonight. Five of 11 from the line, including a couple of missed one-on-one -on -one opportunities in the first half. The lead is four. Hasn't been two in a long time, so Louisville continuing to try and chip away at it. Usher will pick up a foul. 20 feet from the basket. That's four on Jordan Usher. And as deep as Chris Max benches, Josh Pastor doesn't have that luxury. Well, and it's silly. Earlier in this half, after the missed dunk, he fouls somebody 94 feet from the basket. And then he fouls somebody there at the top of the key to pick up his fourth. Not smart. He'll have to sit. Johnson down low on. Alvarado, much bigger player Johnson is, but the quick hands for Georgia Tech gets the ball back to the Jackets. DeVoe just drives into the lane. Alvarado now off balance. He get a call to go his way, just drawing the foul. Johnson second. Colorado's been a problem. He has been a problem all night long, especially when he's got an active dribble. He's probed. He has put so much pressure on Louisville's defense. And Chris Mack just keeps pursuing guys in and out right. to try to find the right combination. Laura back in along with Kimball and McMahon. Alvarado makes one of two. The lead is five. Into Enoch. There's the double. They've doubled him all night when he's caught it on the block. So fresh Kimball is open. Can't make the bucket, and Banks just out muscles Laura for the rebound. And that's why you double, because he's throwing it out of there. You force other guys to make shots. Alvarado on Sutton, drives by him, gets it to Banks down low, and can't get the bucket, but gets the call against Enoch. It's the penetration. He has been a major problem tonight for Louisville. He's just getting by guys at will. I mean, that's, that's, not, that's unlike Dwayne Sutton to just allow that penetration. And then how about the find at the last second? And two more free throws, just a steady diet of the free throw line. Banks converts on the first. Here comes Williams in for Enoch. Williams has been a real nice spark for Coach Mack off the bench. He's got 11 points. Banks makes both free throws. He now has 10 points. The lead back up to seven. Sutton for three. Off the mark. DeVoe pulls the rebound, and Georgia Tech will slow it down a little bit in their half-court offense. Just as I say that, DeVoe drives. Tried to get it to Banks, but a little bit of a force there. Here comes McMahon. Gets it back to Sutton, trailing the play, and we'll get a call against the Jackets. Now 
know, Sutton's going to get two free throws here, but Louisville's had a hard time finishing tonight. And Georgia Tech's a good shot blocking team, but that hasn't really necessarily been the reason. Just haven't finished. He should be going to the line for one free throw here. That should have been a layup by Dwayne Sutton and one free throw. Sutton off the back iron, misses the first. Here he is challenging Moses Wright, who picked up the foul. You know, but he still gets a clean look there. And, and that should be, again, two and a foul shot, and instead you get one point out of that exchange. Coach Mack going to call a timeout. This team trailing by six at the 928 mark here in this second half. Next women's basketball doubleheader on the ACC Network comes your way tomorrow night. Starts at 6 Eastern. Blue Devils in Pittsburgh taking on the Panthers, followed by a nice top 10 matchup with Louisville and Raleigh taking on number four, NC State. Both games right here on the ACC Network, as well as on that ESPN app. That's a big time matchup. Chris Mack in his second year here at Louisville. His team struggled to beat Georgia Tech at home about three weeks ago. Ended up with a four-point win. Tech was in it right basically to the final buzzer. And what's interesting is Georgia Tech, which has played a lot of matchups on this year, 1-3-1, against Louisville specifically, they were 80% man-to-man in that first matchup, and they have been almost entirely man-to-man -man here tonight. And it has made... Louisville very uncomfortable. Cardinals shooting just over 33% for the game. And just one of 14 from beyond the arc. And it's a Louisville team that came in fourth in the country in three-point shooting percentage. Freshman David Johnson now back in the game for the Cardinals. When I start a sentence with, it's interesting, does that, do you perk up? I'm doing it for you. You don't have to. That's redundant. Because Try to get you to pay attention. All you have to do is start a sentence, and I know it's interesting. Louisville shifting to his own here. Harm with a deep three. Sutton looking to penetrate. McMahon now for three. He just hasn't been able to find the mark all night long, but a big rebound. Big time. But Malik Williams has just played so well underneath. How many offensive rebounds does he have? That's four fouls on James Banks, and that's big. And it's a two-handed rebound. I mean, that's textbook. Five offensive boards for Malik Williams off the bench tonight. Textbook. So many guys try to go up with one arm and snatch it out of the air. He goes up with two hands. Grabs it with those bear claws. This is this is a coach's dream. A big guy who goes up with two hands for a rebound. And he has been so active tonight. And draws foul number four on the other team's big man, Banks. The lead back down to four for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Coach Mack imploring his defense. Stay in a 2-3 zone. Here's Wright. Gets the ball stolen. Here comes McMahon. Quickly to Johnson. Sutton for three. Way off the mark. An air ball. Still the activity on the board, though. Keeps the ball with Louisville. It's Malik Williams. Amazing, one for 16 tonight. Well, they're second in the nation. I mean, they lead the ACC at 44%. They're second in the nation at 44%. And McMahon is a guy who usually gives him instant offense from beyond the arc when he comes off the bench. He couldn't throw it against the, you know, the broad side of a barn tonight. He's a 46% three-point shooter on the season. Well, look, if you're Louisville and you want to go to a Final Four and compete for national championship, you have to win games in conference play when you're not playing your best. Louisville has absolutely not been at their best tonight. In fact, they haven't been very good. But can you grind it out here on the road? Can you get defensive stops? Can you manufacture enough offense 
it's become a grind for both of these teams on the offensive end. Very physical game. We go back to Georgia Tech in a, in a warm building too. Moore. Down low to Cole, now to DeVoe for three. Finally, DeVoe hits from the floor, his first field goal. Lead back up to seven. Johnson coming off the pick. Sutton drives strong, and he'll get the call. He is a freight train coming down the lane. You know, they, Louisville stayed in the 2-3 zone for a third straight possession. Sometimes you fly too close to the sun on wings of wax, and DeVoe melts it from deep. Cardinals have hit one of their last 11 field goal attempts. They trail by seven at the 7.43 mark here in this second half, and Louisville came into this game really with hopes of maybe navigating their way to a number one seed in the upcoming NCAA tournament. Joe Lenardi has them right now on that two line. A loss here tonight would hurt. Well, they don't have any bad losses yet. Tonight would be a bad loss to a sub-500 team. And you know, and then you talk about the ACC standings, like other than being a miraculous win for Duke at Carolina, it also only keeps them a game behind Louisville. Florida State two games in arrears, you're right. So you lose this, and now we have a tie atop the ACC. Wayne Sutton shooting two makes the first. Stephen Enoch coming back in the game for the Cardinals. So they get instantly bigger as McMahon takes a seat. Jordan War was still two points on the night. Well, they have figured out how to win games when he doesn't play well or score a lot. Now let's go Sutton way they're down five. I think they've stayed in this zone because of the penetration. The penetration of Alvarado in particular has hurt them. But they're staying in this 2-3 zone. Eight to shoot, Usher. War with the quick hands and the steal. Off nicely to Johnson. Good decision. Lead the ACC in scoring and he gives it up. A great decision. The lead has been dropped to three. Josh Pastner calling a timeout. So many guys who score for a living are pigs about a play like this. And they're trying to do it on themselves. That's the right basketball play. And he gives it up to a freshman to bank it home. Moore with his first assist on the night to go with three rebounds. And again, just two points. But you're quite possible, Naismith winner. National Player of the Year, only two points in this game, and you're only down three points on the road. Yeah, and the four turnovers. Yeah. You know, their you know, bench points there, a big part of it, Malik Williams, who's really a sixth starter, comes off the bench, he's been big, and, and Chris Mack, probably because they're in this 2-3 zone, he's gonna play both bigs together, which they have not done a lot of. He's got Enoch and Malik Williams in the game. And James Banks out of the game for Georgia Tech because he has four fouls. Here's Banks back in on that baseline. Couldn't handle the pass, but gets it back. Now they're going to call a double dribble on Banks. Out of his element, a little bit far from the basket, and it doesn't pay off. Louisville an opportunity to chip even closer. Johnson working on the much smaller Bubba Parham. Loses it going up for the basket and turns it over. 
They've tried to isolate that matchup all night when Parham's been in the game. DeVoe tried to go baseline, shut off. Right. Oh. He gets fouled going up for it. That's a bad call. Enoch now picks up his fourth. I thought he was walled up there. Both starting centers now with four fouls. Thanks, and Enoch. That's right, seventh point of the game. Cardinal substitution number 30. Man now coming in for Enoch, so I just mentioned it a moment ago they were getting a little bit bigger with both bigs out on the court. Now Enoch with four fouls has to sit and McMahon back on. Moses Wright hits both free throws, lead back up to five. We'll stay with Louisville. Fresh Kimball coming back in the game. Chris Mack is working this substitution game. Every trying, whistle. He's trying to find something. There hasn't been anything tonight they could ride offensively. He's been searching all night. This is where War has got to take over. Like he, he's got to be an alpha dog. He's got to demand the ball, take over a game. Six to shoot now for Kimball to McMahon. He's going to have to force it up off the front iron. DeVoe pulls the board. Right again at that elbow. Working on McMahon. Gets it to go. Lead is seven. Kimball looking to drive baseline. He does. He's shut off by Banks. Williams will try a three, and he hits. How about that shot? That's 16 points from Malik Williams off the bench. And it's just the second three-pointer of the entire night for Louisville. Right again. Now he passes out of it. DeVoe for three. Way off the mark. Kimball. Here's Wara. To McMahon in the corner. Now he hits. That's his first field goal of the night. And it gets this Louisville bench up off their feet. And it gets that deficit all the way down to a single scant point. And another great decision by Jordan Wara. He makes the right basketball play. This is your three by Malik Williams. The help comes over. Nobody's concerned about Williams being a three-point shooter from there. James Banks doesn't even hustle, hustle to close out. Daring Williams to shoot it, and he buries it in his face. And then look at the decision. Alvarado assumes Moore are going to take it to the basket. He kicks it out to a knockdown three-point shooter to cut it to one. Game hasn't been this close since it was three to two. Our graphics are down here, just to remind everybody. So just want to let you know we'll keep you up to date as best as we can on time and score. 4.32 left to go in this game. Cardinals have fought back to make it a one-point contest. Georgia Tech's in the double bonus. They'll shoot two the rest of the way. Louisville will shoot one and one for the next two fouls, and then they're shooting twice the rest of the way from there. You know, the zone, the zone for Louisville has been good. You know, other than the DeVoe three, it's taken Alvarado out of the game. His penetration was carving up that Louisville man-to-man. -man. The zone has taken Alvarado out of the game. And put more onus on Moses Wright, as we've seen in the last couple of trips down. Other guys to, to create plays against the zone. Because he's going to get the ball in the center of that zone, right? 
right at the free yeah. throw line. And what he decides to do with it is going to go to a large. He's going to make him a playmaker. Yeah. yeah. Whether he decides to shoot or pass out of it. And now Louisville goes to a man to man after our astute analysis. Sutton on DeVoe. DeVoe gets by him, and Sutton has to help out. But a chance for a three point play for DeVoe. And, and Chris Mack has changed his defenses out of timeouts because you assume the opposing head coach is going to draw something up against your defense. But this is why they went to a zone. The penetration all night has devastated Louisville. And DeVoe going to his strong hand. He is a lefty. And what a tough finish through traffic that was. Completing the three-point play. Just like that, DeVoe has seven. Lead back up to four for Georgia Tech. Laura over to Sutton. Here's fresh Kimball. Now Ward tries for three. Off the front of the rim. Bodies flying everywhere. It's going to be a call against Tech. And who's there again? Malik, Malik Williams. Williams. Unbelievable, this kid. Hits a three, crashes the offensive board. Tech still leads, but it's nail-biting time. The lead is four. Tech up by four at the under four. Of equal concern for Yellow Jacket fans is the number five. That's how many fouls James Banks has now. He'll have to take a seat the rest of the way, just fouling out of the game. Jose Alvarado, he's our Zaxby's player of the game tonight, the new father. 14 points on five of 10 shooting, three threes. Does have four turnovers on the night though, but when he's been in the game, he got in a little early foul trouble, Chris. That hurt Georgia Tech. They've needed him because they've been a different team with him in there, obviously. 100%. He's the engine that's driven the whole thing. Forced Louisville into a, into a zone over the last five minutes because of his penetration and creation. And now it'll be interesting to see what Chris Mack goes with with his lineup because he's been shuffling guys in and out this whole second half. And that young man right there, Malik Williams, has been sensational. This is the front end of that one and one as I say that but he's still been great on the boards and now you have Stephen Enoch with four fouls for him too does he go big does he bring Enoch in at what point in time because Georgia Tech now with a serious size advantage as they're going with a really small lineup and Jordan Wara not in the game Parham goes baseline eight to shoot for Alvarado long three that's off the mark Williams with the rebound Kimball gets it to Williams. Williams backing in right with the wow. left. In and out, but the rebound goes the way of the Cardinals and Dwayne Sutton. Well, George, Georgia Tech has been doubling Enoch when he catches it on the block. They are not doubling Malik Williams. Got a great look and a good follow-up. Right strong to the bucket, but can't finish. Under three minutes in a two-point game, Jordan Wara on the bench for Louisville. Williamson to McMahon for the lead. Off the mark, right with the rebound. Parham to DeVoe, just along the outside now for Georgia Tech. Alvarado tries to penetrate and get it to Usher, but turns it over. <laughs> Offensive foul. It's going to be called against Malik Williams. He's trying to post as he comes down. And I don't know why that's a foul. That's a bad, bad call. That's an official who caught that play late. Moses Wright was pulling on Malik Williams, and then Moses Wright just fell down. Under two to play. Jackets lead by two. 
Alvarado just looking to probe that defense. Can't find anything. Back up to DeVoe. 12 to shoot. He'll drive baseline. Gets cut off right now for the two. Can't get it to go. Big crash for the rebound. Here comes Johnson to McMahon. Back to Johnson. Shot block. Louisville wants a goal 10. They won't get it. Now they do. Yeah, they're, they're going to look at this. I thought live that it was a goal 10. Yeah, that's a goal 10. What was this right went up to block it after it hit the backboard first? It looks to me like it hits the backboard. Let's take a look. Not called initially. The officials are here looking at the replay, Chris. Under two minutes, they're allowed to do this now. You see Jamie Lucky and Jeffrey Anderson taking a look at the replay. Meanwhile, Josh Pastor drawing something up on the board for Moses Wright and company. If this bucket goes, we are all knotted up at 132. Man, that's close. It's close, and it looks like the ball may have been coming down as well when Wright got a piece of it. You know, live, I, I thought it was a goal 10. Officials didn't call it immediately. And the more you look at it, that's tough. Those are the looks that the officials have, the looks we just gave you. A monumental call in this game. As again, Jamie Lucky and Jeffrey Anderson are taking a look at it. Jamie Lucky wants to see it again, as you can see. Rewind that thing. Fans here at the game have pretty much seen it all tonight. Officials continue to talk this over. That question is whether a block by Moses Wright for Georgia Tech was actually goaltending or not. And if it is called goaltending, we've got a tie game. If not, Georgia Tech side out with still a two-point lead. Didn't call it goaltending. No. Let it stand, Jamie Lucky now explaining it to Chris Patola. He said, uh, Jamie Lucky said it's reviewable. They deemed that it was not goaltending. Georgia Tech will retain the ball. Just explain was, to Chris Mack. And he called it a late whistle. So, I mean, they, you know, because you could review that, they, they blow it so they can come over and look at it, which I, I think is a good thing. It's a big call. Jackets with the ball and a two-point lead. It's been all from the outside lately for Georgia Tech. Moses Wright, he'll drive. Gets the layup. Right now with 12, the lead is four. Johnson gets it to McMahon, under a minute. Johnson will penetrate back to his left. Williams for three, off the mark. Off Georgia Tech, it'll stay with Louisville. There he is in the middle, right at that ACC logo against the zone, Moses Wright. Good jab step, gets it to that right hand, and he finishes. Jordan Wara still not on the floor. Well, now he's gonna sub in, so Chris Mack gonna put his leading scorer back into the game. Calls a timeout at the 50-second mark. 
Georgia Tech out of timeouts just as a reset. Louisville has one thirty second remaining after this timeout. They'll have the ball down four. To try and draw something up. This has been a little bit of a slugfest, hasn't it? Especially here in the second half. The score, the score indicates as such, and it has been exactly that kind of game. If you're just tuning in, you have 55-51 in the final 50 seconds. It's been that kind of night. This has been a early to mid-February conference game where you've got the best team in the league record-wise, and playing the best. Louisville is the best team in the ACC right now. 10-game winning streak coming in. Playing a team in Georgia Tech who's at home, is hungry, is talented. This is, a, this is obviously a big-time possession. I, you assume he puts War back in the game because he's drawing something up to go to him. I don't think there's any question that War has got to get a touch and a look here. The 10-game winning streak for Louisville in conference play is the longest in the ACC in 37 years. That's how well they're playing basketball right now. The freshman David Johnson to inbound. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Johnson gets it into the corner. Here's Williams for three again. Off the iron, Parham with the rebound. Gets it to Alvarado. No timeouts for Georgia Tech. Trying to get it across the midcourt line, and DeVoe loses it. And Johnson loses it, but it'll be a call against DeVoe. Well, Georgia Tech doesn't have any timeouts. So you've got to get it over the timeline, and, and time pressure was an issue. And a smart decision. Louisville does not foul. They decide to play it out defensively. You get the turnover and two free throws by the freshman. This is nine fouls now for Georgia Tech. It's ten. So it'll be two free throws on the shot. So this is still nine team fouls against Georgia Tech. Johnson hits the first. Now, if I'm Louisville, you got to pick up. Assuming he makes it, you pick up. Early trap, and then you got to lay a foul. Georgia Tech, no timeouts on the board. Johnson hits both of them. Chris Mack calls his final timeout. All ACC back in the studio coming up next. However this game ends up, it will be covered extensively. So important here for Georgia Tech. We'll see who Josh Pastner has inbounding to basketball. The most important guy right now on the floor is the inbounds passer. As we learned in that Duke, North Carolina game, late in that one. Jose Alvarado or Jordan Usher, who are the two best foul shooters out there. One of those two guys has to catch the ball. And Usher's inbound. It's been four years, more than four years, since Georgia Tech beat a top five team. It was Virginia back in January of 2016. Usher's taking it out for the Jackets. Big Malik Williams trying to prevent him from getting in, and he does. Here's Alvarado. Foul on David Johnson. Well, they had Moses Wright. I mean, you got to be prepared. If Moses Wright catches it, he's a 55% foul shooter. You got to foul him. Instead, you put Jose Alvarado, who's a 78% foul shooter, at the line. Just one for two so far on the night from the line. He hits the first. That's a big one. This next one is huge.
15 points for Alvarado. Johnson will push. Right to the bucket, and one. Wow. And this is great. Doesn't take a whole lot of time off the clock, right down the pipe. And I didn't see a foul there. And it was the back official. You could see it in your replay. It's that back official who made the call. I don't know what he saw. But a great decision by David Johnson to push. He's got 14. The lead back to one. Alvarado fouled. Shot clock will be off the rest of the way, so it's going to be a foul fest if Alvarado can keep knocking down free throws. David Johnson is fourth. Johnson's fourth. Freshman who has 14 points on the night. To be clear, it's been a bit of a foul fest all night. Yeah. Why would the final 25 seconds be any different? Plus, even if Alvarado makes both these free throws, Chris Mack can set up for a potential game tying three, even though there's no timeouts. Neither team has a timeout on the board. Alvarado's been clutch here in the final minute shooting free throws. He's got 17 on the night. Now four or five from the line. Nick is five of six. You don't need three. Do the same thing you just did. Drive the ball. McMahon to Johnson. Drives on Usher. Boy, Usher had to be careful there. He didn't get a call. The lead is one. Here comes Alvarado. Picks up his dribble. Now he's in trouble. Back to Usher. He'll be fouled by Johnson. He's out of the game. Usher will go to the free throw line with 13 and a half left. Frantic here in the last minute. Outstanding game for the freshman, David Johnson off the bench. Give him 16 points. Well, and he's had their last two buckets. He's been the guy who's driven the ball. I mean, they'd still have time to do the same thing if you were in the game. I mean, how about that? Usher, 84% free throw shooter coming into the game. This is the first. You put that game pressure on, things get a little tight. Second one good. Lead is two for Georgia Tech. Fresh Kimball will bring the ball up for the Cardinals. Driving on DeVoe, loses it. And now we'll get a foul against the Cardinals. Kimball just drove to the bucket and lost it in the lane. I don't understand. First of all, I don't understand what Fresh Kimball's doing. I don't understand why Jordan Warwick can't get a touch here. I just don't understand. I mean, if I'm going down, I'm going down with Jordan Warwick taking a shot. He, right now, he's the ACC's player of the year. Two points on the night for Jordan Warwick. Regardless, though, Chris, he's got to get the ball there. DeVoe hits the first. I would agree with you 100%. Alvarado with a chance to give the Jackets a four-point lead here with 8.1 remaining. Or DeVoe, I should say. Excuse me. Gets them both. Louisville's got to move quickly. McMahon has the ball knocked out of his hands. It will remain with Louisville. Whatever your best side out of bounds to get a three is, you got to get it. Watch Ryan McMahon. Williamson to inbound the ball for Louisville. Here's Wara off the mark. DeVoe with the rebound on the air ball, and he's fouled with .3 left. Williams is fouled out. Georgia Tech, just three tenths of a second in springing the upset. They were so close to springing just a couple of weeks ago at the Yum Center. They're going to get it here tonight at McCamish. And they did it wire to wire. Jumped out big in the first half. Have led the entire way. Georgia Tech's new president. 
in the first upset of his career as the president of this institution. And a big win for a Georgia Tech team that has come very close on many occasions this year. Only to fall just short. And they won't do that tonight. This will be the highest ranked opponent Josh Pastner has beaten as the head coach here at Georgia Tech. DeVoe hits both free throws. Lock winds down. Georgia Tech with the big upset of the number five team in the country, the Louisville Cardinals. <laughs> 